Day 12, Year 100 of the Dawn The First Adam Love makes two kisses. It does not matter what happens to them. They will live through all eternity. George Gomez, The Music from the Water Now that I got the whole, I am his and he is mine established, that it has to be with Elohim because of the chuppah, the covering of his presence. I want to write more about Adam and me in the garden. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and with the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Genesis I think the first thing I want to write about is the whole idea of being naked and not being ashamed. I had never been anything but naked, so to Adam and me, this was completely natural. We had nothing to compare it to, just as you, my future children, who will be clothed most of your life, would not understand the completely natural feeling of absolute nakedness. Even though you came into the world naked, you were a baby and don't remember what it felt like. So excuse me as I attempt to describe the indescribable by comparing a lemon to a pomegranate. When I woke up next to Adam after the whole dream within a dream that I already told you about, I sensed him first, before anything else. It was like a sensing and a smelling at the same time, an inhaling. I inhaled Adam at my first awareness of being next to him, his aroma, his body breathing next to mine, his heart beating, was like nothing I had ever known. Well, I say that, but it's not entirely true. It was very near the incense of the presence I felt with God, but it was also so earthy, so natural. I felt every fiber of my being wake up as I inhaled the presence of Adam, I stared at him for a long time, and as I did, I wanted to feel my own skin first, as it was in relation to his. I felt my soft thigh, the curves, the beautiful muscle tapering down to my knee, and my first reaction was to place it into the strong curve of his leg. As I did this, my whole leg curved around his like we were the branches of two trees. No the branches of one tree as they sometimes weave together. He stirred in his sleep just a teensy bit as his leg wrapped around mine. I lay still. I was enjoying this so much that I did not want to wake him just yet. After I sensed he was deep into his sleep again, I softly ran my arm along his back until I had encircled his neck. I could feel his pulse. How peculiar. How wonderful. How amazing. As I felt the rhythm of his pulse, not knowing what it was might have been scary or weird, but it was, in fact, one of the greatest experiences. To this day, I remember it like a timeless moment of being perfectly in rhythm with the whole of God's creation, the sweetness of the garden, the expanse of the universe. The pulse held with it the sense of being alive on the earth, and it was very much the same sense of being alive as I had with God before he had put me into this body. But it was more than that. It added another dimension, this new experience of flesh and blood. It was like another way to experience God. This is perfect, I thought. He is perfect. The question of who Adam was did not come to my mind. I felt as if I was a part of him and he was a part of me. I knew he was a part of me. 
I knew he was mine, and that was all I needed to know. As I curved my hand around his neck, again, feeling his pulse, I put my hand to my own pulse. Then I snuggled my pulse alongside his, and it was as if our hearts were beating together in time with one another. The nakedness, like I said, seemed to me the perfect clothing. My skin beside his was not just someone touching another. It was touching without any separation. There was no sin at this point, no childhoods, no pain, no disease, no fear, no vanity, no shame. I didn't even think of how incredible it was, for I had just been formed. Like I said, I had nothing to compare it to. There was only me with him, him with me, even from the first moment, melting into each other. And all of this without even kissing or making love yet. Wow. I sought to relish the experience without rushing anything. Not that I yet knew there could be more than this. I lay listening to the beating of our hearts for the longest time. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. It sounded like a drumbeat of eternal love, if there could be such a thing. The resonance of the beat, which I did not experience until later when we made the first drums, was like the rhythmic beat of the largest drum, the deep, echoing sound that made me feel solid, strong, invincible, and whole. The beat of a drum seems to say, I am here, I am present, I am pulsing, recurring, consistent, all that is normal and good. The pulse sends out stability into the surrounding area and puts things in order. It taps out in Morse code. Even though that is to be invented heaps of years from now, it is the same sort of sound. I am in touch with the earth, yet transmitting sound into the waves of the atmosphere, all the while communicating a spiritual stirring in another human heart. This is what I felt with the beating of my heart with Adam's, that everything was in order, perfect order. I felt that whatever happened, I was stronger, better, and more complete than before, and that I, with Adam, with our oneness, could do anything. This is how it should feel if you are with your Adam, your perfect mate. This is how it should be. Of course, this was before the fall, before I took the bite, before he took the bite. We had everything before us. I wish I could have lain in that moment forever. God had made us for each other, to love and strengthen one another. Now, my daughters, as you read this hundreds of years later, you won't be able to comprehend what I'm saying about the completion I felt with Adam and he felt with me but you will long for it. Yes, you do long for it, and occasionally, for a brief moment, or a night, or a honeymoon, or even on and off over the years as you look into your husband's eyes, if you are lucky enough to marry your soulmate, you will know what I felt in the garden with Adam, but it won't last uninterrupted and there will be so many issues that will get in the way of that complete oneness that it causes my heart to sink as I write to you. The longing that you have is right. It is what was meant to be. You have it because it was given to you from God, so you and your Adam could dwell in unity together. But so many things will get in the way of staying in that complete oneness by the time you are reading this. Even in the best of relationships, you and your Adam will move in and out of the oneness God intends for you. When sin entered into the world and into the garden, we felt naked and ashamed. And from there on out into the future, that is how it will go down. You want to love your lover, but you were sinned against as a child, or you have the taste of a distant lover from the past on your lips or you are anxious about your work and can't relax. Your preoccupation with your body might get in the way of loving your Adam. Perhaps even the fruit of your oneness, your newborn baby, 
is keeping you up all night, interfering with your sex life. The list could go on forever. Even if you marry your first love and you are both virgins, you still have the traditions of your family and those of your religion entrenched in your psyche. You have the opinions of your Aunt Mary or your mother and father or the preposterous stories you were told by your cousin. If you have to marry someone that is not your choice, well then, the list goes on and on. By the time you are in bed to consummate your marriage and become one flesh, you might as well be in bed with a thousand opinions, relatives, childhood experiences, advertisements, not to mention all of your past experimentation that you have done with your own body, which is completely all right, plus your insecurities about how fat or thin you are or whether you are well enough endowed. It's so crowded in your marriage bed that it's hard to find each other, let alone become one. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. It is important, I think, to do a mikvah or a symbolic cleansing before marriage to prepare yourselves for the sacred oneness you so desire. It is most important to stay close to God and ask God to help you put your past behind you and prepare yourself to experience that oneness. You both have the longing to be one with each other. I know this because of the longing I have described to you when Adam woke up. Whoa, I wasn't quite ready for it and had absolutely no idea what to expect. To this day, I remember it like it was yesterday, even after having all my children, even after I lived to be, what, 600 years old or something like that? No one really knows, and it doesn't matter. What does matter is what Adam felt as he awoke to me, his perfect bride, his lovely flower, his soulmate that he didn't even know he needed. He was fine with the animals for company, or so he thought. Ha ha on that. He must have felt me breathing alongside of him. I was just breathing quietly, rhythmically with him. In, out, in, out. Inhale, exhale. It was so comforting. I had no idea what was to come next. Before he opened his eyes, he began to feel my body against his and his legs wrapped around mine tighter, and then he touched me with his hands. So strong, so soothing, so... Then the kissing began as his lips groped for mine. This could have gone on for years. You know how women are. But that was only the beginning. Well, let's just say... I wanted more and more and more until I was singing a tune I never knew and knew that I would be singing that melody again and again as long as my Adam was around. I know you want more details, but I'm your mother after all. You don't want to hear about your mother and father making love, do you? Of course not. But you would like to know about Adam and Eve and dream of your perfect Adam making love to you. I know you all too well, because I know myself. We women are sensual angelics, with a splash of devilicious after all. Oh, did I say that? I meant darlings, sensual darlings, with a splash of deviousness and a hint of insatiable desire. The lovemaking with Adam in the garden. Well, I could go on and on. Let's just say he found the perfect spot. Some of you will get a glimpse of this, a tiny taste of it when you are with your soulmate, your perfect match, a man of compassion, strength, and sensitivity. I wish all of you could experience it as I did with Adam in the garden that first morning. wee ha! I am his, and he is mine. Before there was time, he was mine. We danced alone, till our eyes met. Can a match be made in heaven? Can two souls rhyme before time? We danced alone, till our eyes met. Laurie Matisse